Have you ever wanted to create card visuals that allow you to click on the card like this here and filter the dashboard for the category that's displayed on the card? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set this up. Hi, so Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be exploring how you can solve this problem here. So we've got these four cards here, now each one of them is filtered to show a, a category of our total backlog. So we've got safety, environment, production, routine. Now, what we'd like to be able to do is click on the actual card visual and filter the, the rest of the dashboard for those 26 work orders or for those 56 work orders. Now, it's not been possible in the past. What you'd have to do is add a slicer that's, say, underneath it or close to it or add a filter in at some place on the page that allows you to do that. Now, that's not a particularly great user experience. So in this video, we're going to explore how you can do that using the new slicer visual. OK, so let's get started. Now, the first thing we need to do is make sure that you click on this settings here and enable the, the new button visual. OK, our button slicer, because it's a, it's a preview feature for just now. So depending on when you're watching this video, you may need to come in here under preview features and just make sure this button slicer visual is actually enabled. Now, once that's enabled, we can go and add the new button slicer visual, which is here. OK, so we're going to add that in. I'm just going to stick it on top of here for just now. There we go, just like that. OK, so I'm going to go and add in the category that I want to be displayed in the slicer. And we can see here we're using the work order description because that's exactly what we want. So we've got a slicer here and this is going to be what we're going to use instead of the cards. OK, so we're going to actually use the slicer to display not only the actual category value, but also the figure, the number related to that um, value there as well. So safety, environment, production and routine. So if we just quickly go through these categories here, because there's quite a few interesting additional components that are available, additional features that are available with the new slicer. So obviously you can switch the title on and off. And we're going to switch that off for just now. We've got the usual size and horizontal position and padding, etc. there. So we won't go into that in too much detail just now. Then we've got the slicer settings. So what we want for this one here is we can either have a single select like it is just now, in which case you select on a slicer and it will unselect the other ones. But I'm going to actually re remove that because I want this to be a multi-select. I want it to be whenever you select one of these values here, it actually adds it to the selection criteria. So we'll do that and that's fine. And then we're going to go into shape. Now we've got rectangle here. I'm going to use a rounded rectangle because I just think it looks a, lo a little bit nicer there. But that corners are just a little bit too big for me. So I'm just going to go and take those down to perhaps 10, even a little bit lower than that, six. So that's fine. And there's other shapes available here. You can actually have this option here where you can actually have the edges actually clipped as well. And that allows you to then play with that and decide if it wants to be the bottom or the top. And you can also customize that to have them only clipped at one corner. So you might only want it at the top left. Um, so there's plenty of options there to customize that snipped style. So I'm going to go back here to this rounded one because I'm going to leave it for, keep it simple for, for just now. Then we're going to go into layout and the layout is going to be fine as it is just in the middle for just now. We might come back and change that alignment here. But for just now, what I want to do is I want the rows to be one and I want the number of columns to be four. OK, because I want these to be all displayed like it would just to mimic what we've got along the top here. And then we can play with the space in between the cards and just make that slightly bigger and then make that. there. OK, so I'm just going to place that on top of here for just now. Okay, so this overflow section here determines how the slicer reacts if you've got more categories than can be displayed in the current area that's dedicated to the actual slicer. So if I go back up to layout and we've got three columns instead of four, we can see here that we've now got this scroll bar at the side here because the space that's allocated to the slicer does not enough to display two columns. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into here and we've got continue scroll which is the the default option we've got here or we've got this paginated option here okay and that's just going to give us this option here to paginate up and down now the direction of flow can also be changed so in this example here we've got vertical so that we are paginating or scrolling up and down but we can also have it horizontal okay so just going to go off the side of the page there and the same if we change it to this continue scroll here 
It's going to go across the side of the page here. Okay, so you can actually determine or play about with those examples there just to meet exactly what your needs are and what you actually think is, is appropriate for your actual visualization in your dashboard. So I'm just going to change it back to the four columns here. Okay, so next we're going to go and we're going to look at this callout value here. Now that value is the actual value that's displayed in, on the actual slice itself. And it's got a few different components to it. Now, one of the first things that we'll explore later in the video is that we can actually now change how the value is displayed based on how we're interacting with it. So that's really good because we can actually change how it looks based on how we hover, when we press it and when it's actually selected. Now, prior to that, the old slicer did have some sort of interaction, but it's pretty much default. And there wasn't a lot of options for you to configure this to be exactly what you wanted to make it a really nice user experience. So we're going to go that in, in a second. However, I just want to really quickly show you how you do this. So in the label, we're going to switch that on. Okay, now at the moment, there's nothing there. The label is determined by whatever value you place in this field here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the backlog count into there. And it's pretty much as simple as that. It's able to pick up on the filter context and go and display the backlog count value for each one of those. Now that looks like a very basic card. And if that's all you need, then that's going to be a solution that you can you can use to now have a slicer that looks like a card, but is actually interactive. So you can click on here and you can see that the whole report has been actually filtered for each of these different values here. Okay, so in the next part of this video, we're going to look at how we can make this look and feel a bit better. So first of all, I'm gonna go in here. Now, the backlog count is great, and it's displaying these values here. Now, what's not apparent here is that it actually converts this into a text field. So if you wanted to use or, or display the value based on reducing decimal points or adding commas for, for thousands, for example, then you need to actually create a new measure that explicitly defines what that format looks like. So what it becomes a bit more obvious is if I get rid of this and I put in a value here, so the backlog hours is a lot higher, we can see it's to one decimal place here and it doesn't have commas here for the actual thousands. Now, if I go back into the actual value itself and click on the backlog hours, we can see that we've actually specified it's to two decimal places and it does have commas here. Now, it may well be that we don't have two decimals, we've just got one here. But um, whatever we change this to is not reflected in here because it's converting this into, into some text. And we've got no option here to actually go and actually determine how it's looked, how it looks and feels for that particular um, label here. So pretty simple, straightforward solution. We just go in, create a new measure here, like I've done. And I've just called this one here, backlog hours text. And we just wrapped it within a format statement here. And we've got this string here that's going to convert it into thousands. And mean that if I add that in now, we can see that it's got this commas here when it's required and there's zero decimal places. Okay, so I'm just going to change this back to backlog count. So next I'm going to go and change the formatting here. So it doesn't look too bad, but these numbers are obviously a, a bit, uh, far too small. And I want to increase those and change some of the actual interactions. So let's go back into our callout value here. We will select default, we'll go to values, and I'm gonna change that there to be a different one. I'll go for this, this font here. And I'm gonna make it a lot bigger. Let's make that 20. Okay, so next we're gonna go and change the, the look and feel of this slicer here to make it look more like a card. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this label here, and I'm gonna make that a lot bigger. So I'm going to change that to 20 and I'm actually going to make it bold. Okay. And I would need to update these as well, just to make it a bit more consistent. But for just now, I'll just focus on here. Now for the actual label itself, which is the value in a slicer. So it's kind of reversed from what you would expect if this was an actual card. Now remember, we're using a slicer to look like a card. So the value is actually the label and the label is actually the value here. So just bear that in mind. I'm going to just change that to be a darker kind of grey colour there. And I might make that bold as well. Right, so actually I'm going to leave it as it is for just now. Now, whenever I select one of these, at the moment what's happening is, is this really dark 
black colour with a white back with a white text. I think that's a bit too overpowering. So I'm going to go and change that. Okay, so rather than being a black background and white writing, I want it to be a bit more subtle when some one of these or, or multiple of these are, are selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the buttons option and I'm going to select the state as selected. And we're going to go to this fill here and open it up. And the fill is going to be white. Okay, so we can't see anything there. And that's going to be fine for just now. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go back up to the call up value. And when it's selected, I want the value to be this uh, black color here. And I want the label to also be this black color here. Okay. So now when it's selected, there's not any real difference here. Okay. Click on it and nothing really happens. So what I, I do want some sort of indication that it actually has been selected. So what I can do here is I can go back to the label, back to the value, sorry. And when it's selected, I want it to be bold. Okay. So we can see here that when it's actually selected, it actually turns bold, which gives us a, a little bit of an indication that it's actually selected, which is good. But there's a little bit more we can do. And under the buttons, we've got this option here to add an accent bar. Okay, so we're going to add that on. And again, under the selected option here, um, we can choose the, the, the actual position of the accent bar. So I'm going to make it at the bottom. Okay, now when I select that accent bar now, we can see we've got a little subtle accent bar under there. Just make that slightly bigger. Okay, and it's black and that's black as well. I've just got to mess with the colours there because I think it's this colour here that I want. It's the unselected value I want. So I'll just go back and just select that colour. So I've got a colour value, I've got a default. Let's go back in here and just make sure we've got this colour. Okay. And then we've got selected. And yeah, we'll just make sure we're adding those colours in there. And the same for the label. And we're going to make it the same for the actual under button. The accent as well. Okay, so now if we click on here, we can see there's just a little bit of a, a subtle bolding of the actual category value itself. And this little subtle accent bar underneath, which I think is far... Uh, just feels a far far nicer to look at and than a big black um, splodge of colour that's actually taken up a, a quite a lot of real estate on the screen. Okay, there's just another couple of things we can do here. Um, obviously, we can get rid of the slicer because we don't need that anymore. And we can also get rid of the background and the labels. So let's just go in here and just tidy this up. So I'm going to get rid of the background here. And we don't actually need the borders either. So let's go and get rid of the borders. So I'm just going to go into the button and I'm going to go to default and I'm just going to remove the borders. Okay, so we don't really need the borders because we've got that contrasting colour here between the background and the actual background on the buttons there. So there's obviously thousands, millions of different permutations you've got now that you've got the option here to, to, look, to change the look and feel of the buttons, the images, which we'll cover in another video, and the call out values based on what the actual status of the, or the, the selected status of the button is. So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you've got some ideas about how you could use this in your own dashboards. If you have, it would be much appreciated and helpful if you could give the video a thumbs up and a like. And of course, leave any comments below if you've got anything to add and any suggestions. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.